people in the area letting them know that in uh, less than 15 minutes or so this building will be imploded and it will be imploded when Debbie Wingbermule, correct, uh, pushes the plunger. She won a Y98 raffle and you are the lucky lady that will actually trigger this implosion. What's it like to be in your shoes at this minute? I'm very nervous or getting nervous as it comes down to the few last 15 minutes, but I'm having a good time with it and it's kind of exciting. Is this a emotional, uh, sentimental uh, time for you as you reflect on uh, perhaps your personal memories of the arena? There are some times that, um, yeah, I, I sit back and kind of think of things that I've done there. But, um, you know, time goes on and I understand that things have to change and this is just part of change. And what is your hope for the future? You had a very unique perspective when it comes to memories and the future of development here in St. Louis. Oh, I think we're, we just keep growing and getting better and bigger. So, you know, you have to understand that that's just part of it. So I go along with that. <laughs> If we can, we'd like to show you the plunger that Debbie will push. It is sitting right here at the desk. Again, the countdown at this hour continues. I think there's a feeling of excitement here. And there is also obviously a concern about safety. For that part of the story, we go to my colleague, Sam Cozy, who is on the other side of the arena. Sam. All right, Kim, and as you said, it was safety concerns that caused the evacuation of about 150 people in the Sheltonham neighborhood. Police started blocking off the streets around 1 o'clock today. Many of the residents are gathered here in the Salvation Army parking lot, which is where I am, at the corner of Oakview and Wise, just across the street from the arena. Still, there are a couple hundred people on the other sides of the fence hoping to catch a glimpse of the implosion. Now, this is a very close-knit community with many second- and third-generation family members living right next door to each other. Earlier today we spoke with the Acres family as they spent the last hours of the arena remembering the good old days. I grew up here all this, I've been here all of my life. It's sad uh, spent a lot of time over there as a kid watching the circuses watching them bring the elephants from uh, the railroad tracks down on Manchester and walking them in. Uh, we heard every goal that was ever scored the horn that always blew just a lot of old memories. A little sad. Yeah, kind of be glad when it's over, you know, because, you know, it's different. It'll be different. We've been watching it piece by piece. We've been taking pictures of it daily. I, I think it's a good thing, really, if they develop it like they said, uh, it ain't going to do nothing but make the neighborhood go up. Because with it being empty so long, it's kind of, you know, it's just a bad, it's an eyesore. I was sorry that it wasn't the aquarium. We'd really hoped for that. But uh, we're anxious to see the development plans and just take it day by day, see what happens in the future for us. And we understand that many of the residents will have to stay here until after the implosion, for quite a while after the implosion, until police and utility crews say it is safe to return home. Matt, Laurie, it is, the countdown is on, I'm saying about 10 minutes until the implosion. Indeed. Okay. Thanks, Sam. All right, we have much more to come on this special one-hour edition of News 4 at 5. Meteorologist Joe Petrovich will be back with a complete look at tonight's forecast. And, of course, we are all waiting for the implosion of the arena, and we will bring it to you live when it happens. Stay with us. Welcome back. We are still waiting for the implosion of the arena. Mm -hmm. St. Louis police have set up several areas for spectators to watch the arena implosion. The viewing areas are spread out on different sides of the old barn. News Force Jason Whiteley is at one of those viewing sites and he joins us live. Jason, is the anticipation building there? Oh, uh, Laurie, Matt, right now we're at uh, Forest Park right here at the corner of Highway 40 in Hampton over here. The police are actually just starting to close down the uh, westbound lanes. The eastbound lanes still have a little bit of traffic on them, but Several thousand people are in the area where, where we are right now. And if you look up here at the Hampton Avenue Bridge, John Davis, photographer, is going to zoom in on this. The bridge is packed several people deep here. It seems that almost everybody made plans to be out here on this soggy Saturday. Oh, they missed the empty net. The game is over. Oh, can we sit them? Right here for now. This is a day many St. Louisans have dreaded. Oh, it just seems like every day you see it there and you really don't think much of it to something like this you know it's going to be gone once it goes down it's going to be gone and all you guys memories are really pictures and memories left of it Unbelievable. the old arena so much a part of st louis's history is about to become history it's sad for us but at the same time we want to have memories of it throughout the whole life and so we just came out because we know it's a once in a lifetime chance to see this hundreds of people crowded the hillside across from the arena on the other side of highway 40 
to watch the building implode. I won't be too nervous to say I'm like, I got a roll of 36 in there and I just hope I get them all in within the 10, 15 seconds they say they'll take. Mud never became an issue on this soggy Saturday. St. Louisans were determined to say goodbye to a building of memory. I love the seating in there. Uh, people were good, uh, made friends in there and everything. And it's part of history. It's going on the wayside. Cameras lined the fence, people shared stories, and the fateful minutes counted down. I hate to see it go down. I wish they could have saved it, man, but it's like, uh, it's like anything else that you're used to all your life that you really want to just see it bur you know, buried, I guess you might as well say. Perhaps it's only fitting that in the end, the old arena proves it can still attract an audience. And there are several thousand people out here in this audience waiting to see this happen. James Sutton is one of them here. He has a couple of seats he pulled out of the old barn right before they uh, started the demolition over here. Several thousand people are here. We'll be back here in a little bit to show you what it looks like when the implosion happens. Right now, scheduled for 540, just a few minutes from right now. Laurie, Matt, back to you. All right. Thank you, Jason Riley, reporting from the edge of Forest Park. What a great idea. Bring your arena seat. <laughs> yeah, why not? We're about six and a half minutes away by our count, Joe, and the weather looks yeah. great out there so far. Yeah, the, the storms have moved well to the east. No problems from any of the rain or thunderstorms, and the skies have cleared out just a bit. But some light northwesterly breezes have taken shape behind the frontal system. And with that, the winds out of the west and northwest, about 5 to 15 miles an hour, across all of eastern Missouri and western Illinois, so the areas downwind of the arena, which would be in the southeast corner, will probably see some debris. In the meantime, let's take you back out to the arena this evening. We are seeing uh, sunshine right now. A few high clouds will be moving in. 56 degrees, a west wind at 7 miles an hour. The humidity, 59%. The pressure is now rising. Today's high, 68 degrees. The morning low, 48. And eight hundredths of an inch of rain fell at the airport. But elsewhere, up to and over an inch of rain, especially from Metro East, right along I-70, as those storms became very heavy and also produced not only hail and strong winds, but also quite a bit of rain. Current temperatures in the 50s in our area, in the 40s in the northwestern parts of the two-state area, Des Moines 37, and locally temperatures are in the low to mid 50s with 52 degrees in Cahokia, Chesterfield 57, and Rawa now 56 degrees. The latest look at the radar and the satellite pictures showing the complex of thunderstorms that became severe and moved through our area, now moving through Indiana, southern Illinois, but the heaviest storms are now in parts of Mississippi, Arkansas, and Louisiana. A little patch of clouds to the west will be moving in later on this evening along with some cooler weather. And there's a chance for a sprinkle as this passes through, but nothing heavy. And then some cool weather comes in for tomorrow. But by tomorrow night and Monday, warmer weather will be moving into the western Plains states with highs tomorrow in the upper 40s and 50s in the southwestern parts of Missouri. So a pleasantly cool day expected for tomorrow. As far as this evening, fair skies becoming partly cloudy. Temperatures will be dropping into the 40s with northwest winds at 10 to 20 miles an hour. For the next 24 hours, looking for the morning low near 37 degrees. Lunchtime 44. Tomorrow's high 48 degrees, which is about 20 degrees cooler than today. The next five days, not a bad spring-looking pattern. Tomorrow's 48. Monday, 59. Tuesday, a chance of showers, 63. A bit cooler on Wednesday. A chance for some thunderstorms on Tuesday with the highs in the lower 60s. So you can see a pattern every two or three days. Mm -hmm. Another weather system passes through. We'll have another update at 6 o'clock. All right. Thank you, Joe. And we have an update right now on the implosion of the <laughs> arena. Right, Lori? Guess what? <laughs> it's even later. <laughs> 5.45? 5.45 now? is what they're telling us now that they will uh, implode the arena. And, of course, whatever time it happens, mm -hmm. you will see it live right here on News 4. With seven camera angles. Mm -hmm. Well, in nearly 70 years, the arena has hosted some of the biggest events in St. Louis history. Coming up a little bit later, we will take a look at some of those milestones. And we are awaiting the implosion, which should happen in the next few minutes. The latest scheduled time right now at 5.45 p.m. Stay with us. Okay, we are still moments away from the end of the arena scheduled for 5.45. Our team coverage continues right now with News 4's Mike O'Connell. He is live at the spot where the detonation will be set off. Mike? Let me tell you, Lori, exactly how this is going to work. There are 600 separate charges that will go off in a period of about 10 or 20 seconds. It'll take about 20 seconds for the building to come down. It will start the explosions on the south end of the building, and then the later explosions will happen as they get closer to us on the north end of the building. This is all designed so that the building will fall, collapse inward on itself. Now, earlier this week, we had a chance to talk with two men 
who spent lots of time at the old arena. They each have lots of memories, each from his own unique perspective. I would always start out like this. For 22 years, the music at the arena came from Ernie Hayes, perched high above the ice among the nosebleed seats. Hayes has a unique perspective on the building. A wonderful, wonderful building to get your adrenaline pumping. Hayes music helped get the adrenaline pumping, but his earliest memories of the old barn are of attending the circus there as a child. I used to watch the uh, St. Louis Flyers play hockey there as a youngster. We, we could get in the game for 64 cents was the price of admission. That was in the early 1950s. Mike Shanahan, of course, went on to become Blue's owner to socialize with the stars. The crowd at the arena was like having an extra player. There's just no two ways about it. When you went in there, the crowd was like them having one extra player on the ice. Shanahan and Hayes agreed the key to St. Louis's love affair with the arena is generations grew up with the building, passed it daily on the way to school, then on their way to work. It's the location, it's the fact that uh, the genesis of the building, that there are just so many people in St. Louis that grew up with it. The, uh, the, the parking is right around it. Uh, it's a visible area. The barn is coming down, but Shanahan will still treasure his first win as owner. Holes 50 goals in 50 games, the 1988 All-Star Game. Hayes won't forget the night the pigeon pooped on him as he played the friends he made, and the Monday Night Miracle. That was the night that I couldn't hear the ocean. The crowd was so loud, I had to pedal to the metal, and there was 3,500 watts of sound. I could not hear the organ. You are now looking live at the plunger that will blow up the old barn. In the last about minute, they just wired it up with that yellow wire, which you can see runs all the way eventually into the old barn. We are expecting one final flare, probably in about two minutes and 15 seconds. That will be the final warning, letting us know that the explosion is one minute away. They have now closed off all of Highway 40, both eastbound and westbound, between Clayton McCausland and Kings Highway. So we're now getting very close to the end of the arena. Let's go to Jason Whiteley, I believe. Mike, we're going to uh, stay back here, give you a good shot of the arena. The, uh, I just had a flare go off a minute ago. Mike, you're at the right place for him to be right now with the uh, detonation team. People are here starting to chant. They've been excited since they've been out here all afternoon. Some have been here since this morning. One woman even has a tin over here. Trumpet playing down here. Just several thousand people are in this area right here waiting for this to happen. Let's just keep an eye on the old barn here and wait for things to happen. Uh, we're, talking to, we're talking to several people earlier today. James Sutton is one of them. You were out here earlier today, also out here right now with your uh, seats that you took out of the old barn. Mm -hmm. Sad to see you go? Very sad. I mean, they should have come up with a better thing to do other than tear it down. Let me ask you this. You had a model made of it all. So what's your attraction to this building, even though you're just 21? Just the architecture and all the memories that I had going there, all the events that I saw. Just a great place to see, you know, hockey and basketball. How are you going to remember today in the next few minutes here when this building uh, implodes? Uh, a bad day. No, nothing else you could say, just a bad day. And you guys have your still cameras out here, your video cameras also, hoping to get some uh, memories? Yep. Anything possible to get our last memories of the place while it still stands. Very uh, nerve-wracking moment. I heard the helicopters, news helicopters are circling around here. The Hampton Avenue Bridge over uh, Highway 40 here is packed with people all around Highway 40. Let's go back to Matt. Now he's there with the detonation team. Things may be happening here in just a moment. Matt? All right. Well, thank you, Jason. Now, we're going we're gonna to stay right here uh, yes. because uh, by our count, we're only about a minute and a half away from mm -hmm. the implosion of the arena. So, Lori and I will just uh, stay with you, and then we'll take a look at some pictures right now of the arena live. We do, as Lori mentioned, have seven cameras uh, around and inside yeah. the arena as well. I think that inside shot is the most interesting. Mm -hmm. I don't know what we're going to see if, if, as they have said, that the implosions are on those steel or the uh, explosions are on those steel beams, right. and there are 300 of them. Each of them will have two explosions, and hopefully 
there where you can see the slits cut out, that's where it will begin, and hopefully we'll be able to see some of those explosions as it moves toward the right. camera, which yeah, will, of course... it's designed to collapse uh, before, the, before the live camera shot. We are waiting for the final one-minute flare, uh, which will give us the one-minute warning, and uh, uh, we are watching this live with you. We are hoping to get some sort of a countdown, at least a, a 10 9 eight, at yes. least, uh, some sort of a warning, so that you can watch this along with us. There we go. as it said, he did not anticipate a huge dust cloud because mm -hmm. there was very little inside the arena. Mm -hmm. That looks big to me. That's a pretty big <laughs> dust cloud. And the, uh, the entire implosion, uh, I was trying to keep an eye on the clock, took only about 10 seconds. It came down rather quickly. And that's exactly what he anticipated. He said it would be 5 to 10 seconds. Are we going to go to one of our live reporters? Maybe we should go to Jason uh, out there on the hill by Forest Park there. Jason, what's the reaction from the crowd if you can hear us out there? Matt and Laurie, I'm out here. The, the smoke and the uh, debris is actually blowing towards the east, but it was wow. I mean, what can you say about something like this here? Several thousand people here were watching it when it all happened. We were actually so close to it on the other side of Highway 40 here that your, your chest was actually shaking when the bombs, when the uh, dynamite was dead. And the ground was too, exactly. The was shaking. You've been out here for quite a yes, while. Tell I me did. what you think I about this. To to, you know what? That's the something I haven't seen. This is my first time seeing something blew up. My very <laughs> first time I've seen a building. The ground was shaking, chest pounding. You was like, I never, it's like you couldn't even believe it. Just live, just something that you've never seen. It was no doubt loud. What do you think about the fireworks at the end? That was kind of a fitting in, kind of a place, huh? Jason, this is, we're taking a look at the inside camera here right now that was placed on the north end inside the arena. We're going to watch it come down on that camera, which uh, obviously has been lost as of right now. But uh, absolutely an amazing sight. Uh, and there goes the picture goes dark, but uh, we're, again, we're looking at a, a helicopter shot. Jason, yes. uh, you're saying uh, folks uh, uh, down there are pretty amazed about what they saw, right? Okay, let's go to Mike O'Connell, who is uh, standing by in the north end of the uh, arena. Mike, you, you don't have too much uh, smoke. I am joined there. with Eric Spiritus, the president of Spiritus Wrecking, who just blew it up. Tell me how things went. Went very well. Looks like there is a little bit of dust. That comes out from the bottom, and it uh, looks like the building did break up, rubble ice on the, on the rooftop. We had a successful shoot. Uh, we saw that uh, some of your colleagues, I think even your father, were raising their arms. This was a successful operation. Tell us, a lot of planning went into this. A lot of planning. This is an absolutely successful uh, job, and it goes from, uh, it's not me and my dad, it's our whole team. It's Neil Vogel, our project men, uh, Steve Gaines. These guys did a great job. They're the ones that make this thing come down. And now, what are we smelling right now? We're smelling fireworks, <laughs> or, or those visuals on top, which were, were very successful, too. It was a very good job. Tell us about the 600 different charges. Tell us how it worked. It seemed to work perfectly south to north. Tell us why you did that. I think the live shot inside shows it the best, which was nice. I would like to see that one because it really shows all the pieces. What did you think? Wasn't that successful? It was spectacular. Absolutely. It really came apart well, which was the concern was, will the roof come apart or not? And not in terms of failure, but in terms of how are we going to have to handle it on the ground? It looks like it's all in pieces. Eric, thank you very much. Hey, Michael, if you could hold on to him, one, I have Eric, one more one question second. for him. One last question. How long will it take to clean up that big How long is this now? cleanup now going to take, Eric? Cleanup will take about two and a half months and we'll be separating everything and working towards recycling as much as we can. Obviously it's going to take a lot longer to clean up after this spectacular fireworks display that we just saw here. There are lots and lots of people and everybody just held their breath gathered at the spot where we are. Uh, because everything went along well, Highway 40 is now open again in both directions. Michael, uh, what was it like uh, for you? Jason told us uh, he could feel the pounding on his chest from across Highway 40. You were a lot closer to the arena than he was. Uh, I didn't feel it in the chest, but it was visually just uh, stunning. I mean, it, it's not a positive thing when a, a building with such history comes down. Uh, however, it was just an amazing visual sight, and everybody just sort of held their breath, and there was complete silence here among the crowd but there were plenty of members of the team who had planned this for so long, uh, cheering and putting up their arms because it was a successful operation. Well, that is the good news indeed, that uh, everybody uh, yeah. 
got out of there without anybody getting hurt, no yes. major problems, uh, and it came down. No surprises. Right down as planned, indeed. Let's go to the helicopter and get another look at and see how that dust cloud is dissipating, because Mike said already that he is smelling just mm -hmm. fireworks and it's clearing off. Yeah, this is obviously from a, a mile, or at least a couple miles away uh, from uh, where the implosion site is, but uh, as Joe mentioned, there's some strong winds out there, and they mm -hmm. are blowing uh, that uh, smoke and dust uh, away right now, but uh, we are going to uh, go to some videotape that is going to show what the implosion looked like from the chopper right now. And wow. you can see the fireworks coming out again on the uh, south side. And uh, boy, it came down. It indeed was an implosion in every sense of the word, collapsing yeah. down on itself. Samantha Cozy yes. is, uh, is out and around. Uh, on the she had the, uh, the southern view. Sam, you were at the point where it was uh, beginning, right? That's right. I was actually at a section that was, it was in its shape of a pie, and that was the first section to actually start, and then everything else just collapsed. It was incredible. After hours of waiting, many people, you know, right here in the Salvation Army parking lot waiting for the implosion, it is now, it has now happened, and many people have rushed to the fences to actually get a close-up look of what it, what's left of the arena. I'm joined now by a Lieutenant Colonel Gordon Spicer. Now, you have, for many years, have looked out your window and seen the arena. What do you think now? Well, it's been an ex interesting experience watching them uh, tear it apart piece by piece, but uh, I've never seen anything like this in my life, that that building would collapse in just seconds. And it was a very moving experience for the people around here in the neighborhood, people who have been very anxious about this uh, arena. What do you think now uh, for the future, now of this site? It's very exciting for us. We've been out here a year in this building, and uh, we will welcome uh, new neighbors and be very happy to work with the neighborhoods and see what can happen in this new uh, construction area. All right, thank you very much thank for joining you. us. Now, I want to grab somebody real quick. Shelly Gordon is, uh, no, I'm sorry, Shelly George. Um, you work not very far from here, right. and you were excited about the implosion. Tell me about that. Very much so. I think it's a completely awesome display of power. I just thought it was incredible. Plus, I think that the arena itself is kind of an eyesore, and it's going to be good to see new buildings there. I just, I'm really excited about it. Was this at all what you expected, though? as far as like seeing the building collapse. Um, I don't know if I really would say that I was expected to be so excited about it, but it was kind of interesting to see it. I was glad to be here and feel it. it, was, it everybody seems really excited around us. All right, well, thank you very much. I appreciate it. Now I'm gonna send it over to uh, Kim Dawson, who is on the other side of the arena. And what's it like over there? Well, certainly here along Oakland Avenue, you could hear uh, the explosion uh, and you could really feel the ground shake, but uh, it certainly couldn't have been like uh, anything like it was for Debbie Winbermealy. Tell me what it was like for you the moment you pushed that plunger. Um, it was kind of nerve-wracking and sad at the same time. I mean, I was making sure I was doing it on, on cue, and then to see it all go down was really sad. What went through your mind when we saw it go down? Um, just a lot of everything, old times, um, that it's, something's gone. I mean, when anybody loses or gets rid of something, you, wow, yeah. And <laughs> that's unreal, watching it. Yeah, what did you think when you see it crumble like that and actually being responsible, triggering that implosion? I mean, what is that feeling like? Responsible. Um, well, I think Eric did a wonderful job. I mean, the whole team was great, but it's, it's, it's sad to see it go, but hopefully everything will be, um, much better later on. We'll have new things and new memories coming up with other things. Wow. Seeing it on camera is totally different than I didn't really get a full view of it. So, yeah. Make me cry again. <laughs> a little bit tears right now. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. I get emotional anyway and things like this. Yeah. Ending something an ending to anything is teary eyed. Well, thank you. Thank you very much. Remember this face. It will certainly go down in St. Louis history. The lady that pushed the plunger that triggered the implosion of the arena. Lori and Matt, back to you in the studio. All right. Thank you, Kim Dawson. Probably the biggest mess Debbie will ever make in her life, I guess. <laughs> yes. And if it's going to take a couple of months to clean it up, you bet. Now, mm -hmm. they had said earlier in the week they have to separate that, recycle it, and use that material as backfill right. because they have to leave that site level. Mm -hmm. Talk about cleaning up what you've done. Oh, indeed. And there's probably a <laughs> clean up out along Forest Park where a lot of people have been gathering for a few hours now to wait for this implosion which did happen at 5 45 p.m. Jason Wiley is standing by over there with those fine people. Jason. <laughs> Matt and Lori right now these fine people are actually starting to head home. The uh, Highway 40 has been reopened by police here. It's starting to fill up with traffic. A lot of them are slowing down now to look over what's left of the old arena there. The rubble that's kind of uh, still smoking over there from the implosion a few moments ago. The bridge up here in Hampton Avenue is starting to clear off also. There's a great picture from our helicopter above Oakland Avenue there of just how the 
roof of the arena just fell straight into the uh, straight into the building. We're out here with Denise Gregory. She was out here earlier this morning. She brought a tent out here just in case the rain and the weather got too bad. Fortunately, it was not too bad. What do you think about this? Uh, I think it was well worth the wait. Um, I'm glad we stuck around. It, it gave me chills. My heart's still pounding um, just from the explosion. So I'm, I'm glad we brought the tent and I'm glad we stuck it out. Now, I, I could feel the the uh, pounding in my chest when it happened and on the ground. Did you feel the same thing, I guess? Absolutely. I think yeah. everyone in the crowd did. You could tell the crowd was very excited. I'd say we were about 150, maybe 200 yards across Highway 40 where it actually happened. It was an amaz amazing sight. What are you going to take away from here today? Well, I have a great picture in my mind, and I'm going to be recording all of the television broadcasts. Um, I'm going to just be remembering all the memories of the games, hockey games, steamers games, concerts when I was really young. So it'll be great memories. And it was worth it to be out here despite all the uh, soggy conditions and the mud. I mean, my feet here are soaking wet. I know yours are too. And so is your tent. Yes, everything is very muddy, but it, you know what? It all comes clean, so it was well worth it. Good deal. Denise is just one of several thousand people out here who watched the implosion about 5.40, 5.45 here St. Louis time. Quite a sight here from our vantage point in Forest Park, about 150 yards across Highway 40. You could feel the ground pounding here when the uh, charges were set off. We were so close, our chests were pounding here also. Quite a sight, spectacular thing to be a part of here. And now I guess uh, the St. Louisans who are so much a part of this arena for so many years. We're going to have to uh, start moving on from here. Matt and Laurie. Okay, thank you very much, Jason. My reporting right. from the edge of Forest Park across Highway 40 from where the old arena used to stand. Yeah, the landscape has certainly changed there now. It certainly has. Well, it was originally, originally built uh, on an old coal field from what uh, I understand. Uh, and opened in 1929 originally as a, a showcase for dairy and livestock shows. Mm, there's our chopper shot. You know they were talking about feeling the concussion in their chest. Mm. One of the things that the company had mentioned, um, I asked what would happen if it rains, and Eric Spirito said, we'll get wet. In other words, <laughs> it wouldn't hamper anything except for the sound. Right. The low ceiling would, uh, would hamper sound dissipation. Yeah, well the good thing is that uh, we do have a pretty strong wind out there as Joe had mentioned and it seems to have dissipated that dust cloud uh, considerably uh, as it continued to move uh, I guess uh, mostly uh, towards the east and uh, towards the Mississippi River and uh, the further it goes the more it will dissipate and spread out and uh, be less of an impact to people but uh, we've got a terrific uh, shot of what is left here right now you can see almost a, uh, what looks like a crater of the uh, of, of the stands around uh, the, uh, the playing surface inside the old arena. Yeah, and here, oh, there you see it coming down again, and it really did go off mm -hmm. just picture perfect as planned, and obviously a lot of people are upset about the loss of the building, mm -hmm. but once it was a, a guarantee that it was going to happen, you just hope for it to happen as quickly and correctly as possible, and apparently it, well, it seems to have. Indeed, hats off to Spiritus Wrecking Company for doing that without a hitch and doing it safely right. as well. We are going to have continuing uh, coverage of this event as well yes. as the other day's news coming up uh, at 6 o'clock, so stay with us right here. We'll see you in just a moment. Stay with us. St. Louis. Thanks for choosing News for St. Louis at 6. Our top story tonight, what stood for almost 70 years, stands no more. The arena is now gone, but the many fond memories will always remain. Well, if a picture is worth a thousand words, then the powerful images you're about to see indeed speak volumes. So let's just listen in and watch the sights and sounds of today's implosion of the old barn.
Well, viewing areas are spread out on different sides of the old barn, and News 4 had camera positions for all of them. We begin with News 4's Jason Widely, who is north of the arena, or where the arena used to be. He is standing with hundreds of spectators, many waiting since early this morning. Jason? Yeah, Matt, they've been waiting all day. I, I wouldn't be surprised if some of them actually got here last night. A woman uh, was here earlier. She had a tent out here. This place where we are right now is uh, in the Forest Park area between Hampton and Highway 40 here on the other side, about 150 yards from where the arena once stood here. It's actually getting to be quite, uh, quite a bit of rush hour traffic here with all the people slowing down on the eastbound lanes to take a look over there at the rubble and what's left of the arena over there. Several thousand people were in the area we were here and standing along ha uh, Hampton, Emos, and uh, the Hardys over there trying to get a great view of them. One of the guys here is Paul Cusimano. You had your camera out here from your brother-in-law. It, it's still okay, I assume. No, I just did no damage at all. It's, it did its job and everything went fine. As far as I know, you had you had 36 chances to take a picture of this thing that lasted about 10 seconds or less. It seemed. How'd you do? I had 20, 28 photos taken on this. I had eight left. You took 28 photos in about 10 seconds. 36. Yes, I did. What'd you think about this? You had season tickets here for 20 years. You were saying you spent quite a bit of time at the old arena. Yes, I did. Uh, I think I see my old seats up there too, inside that rubble. But it's part of history. I, you know, I hate to see it go, but. Life goes on, I guess. As you're snapping the shutter away, walk us, uh, walk us through what you were feeling. I know we could feel this, the uh, blast pounding the ground in our chest here. What were you feeling? Uh, emotion. And people were just ripping and yaying, and everything went so quick. You had no emotion, basically, to, to fight back. I mean, it's, everybody clapped when it was over, and I guess it had, it had its time to go. Fitting in for it, huh? Yes, it was. Good deal. Paul, thanks a lot. Okay, no problem. Several thousand people are taking off from this area between Forest Park, uh, Highway 40 here, and Hampton right now. So if you're going to be in this area here, be prepared to wait in traffic for quite a while because Forest Park, all the people who have been parking along there are actually trying to get out of the park now. They're all getting onto the highway, Highway 40 and Hampton here. It's all packed around here between Hampton and up towards Barnes and Kings Highway there. So good luck getting out of this area here. Mike O'Connell had a great place, a uh, great viewpoint from the uh, detonation area. Uh, we'll uh, talk to him in a second. First, let's go back to Matt and Laurie. All right. Thank you, Jason. All right. Reporting from the edge of Forest Park. Yes. All With right. a different team. view now. <laughs> and as Jason mentioned, our team coverage will continue with News 4's Mike O'Connell. And Mike is standing by live at the spot where the detonation went off. Mike? Yeah, there's a whole lot of rubble behind me, and as the cars zing by on 40, they're honking their horns. They don't see the arena anymore, just a big pile of debris. Joining me right now is Neil Gilb along with his son, who is, I believe, nine years old, his son, Ross. He'll maybe start off by telling me why you brought Ross here today. Well, there's a lot of memories for me. Uh, my first event was back in 1972 uh, at a Ted Nugent concert here at the arena. Been here many times for hockey with both the Blues and when St. Louis U had to have, uh, used to have their hockey team here. And uh, the circus and many other uh, events, too. So it's, it's, it's a sad thing, but we understand what progress means, too. What did you think as you saw it come down? Uh, it was pretty amazing. Uh, we had never we had seen others on TV, but uh, we wanted to be here for this. It was just amazing. Tell me why you decided to bring Ross. Well, it's a piece of history in St. Louis since it's been around since the 20s, and uh, Ross has been here several times too for the circus and other things. And uh, it was just uh, something that he'll remember. Well, let's talk to Ross briefly. Ross, your memories now are going to be all of the keel. What did you, what did you think as you saw this? Um, I thought it was amazing, too. Pretty amazing. Mm -hmm. You've never made a mess, anything like that one? No. Uh, did you uh, remember any of the game? What, what, did you, what events did you see here at the arena, I guess? I went to the um, Blues game and the circus. You went to the Blues games and to the circus. Mm -hmm. And you were amazed? Yeah. Well, well, there were lots and lots of people who were amazed here, and now we've got an amazing pile of debris. It'll take a couple of months to clean it all up. Lori and Matt, back to you. All right, thank you, Mike O'Connell. Tough old building. I didn't realize it had yeah. survived a Ted Nugent concert. <laughs> yes. They can be pretty loud. At least no. they used to be. <laughs> no wonder it took 300 uh, <laughs> explosives to bring it down. Well, today's implosion has temporarily forced neighbors living around the arena from their homes. News Force Samantha Cozy is talking with some of them. She joins us live now from the corner of Oakview and Wise. Samantha. Well, the crowd is certainly dispersed. They're still a little loud, but they have started to go home. Um, I am joined by Dan Jones, who is actually has a close connection with the arena. Your grandpa actually managed the arena. Tell us about that. 
Yeah, he took over in 1932 as a result of the Depression and managed the arena through the uh, 30s, 40s, 50s, and into the 60s, into the late 60s. Uh, he's the man that designed a lot of the new things that they put in the arena in those times, such as the ice, the machine that created the ice and then took the ice away, melted it, everything. So. So now tell me, you know, as we watch this video and, and you saw it in person, you actually came up from Tennessee. That's where you're living now. What was it like to see the implosion? It was uh, a mixture of, of excitement, obviously, and sadness. I mean, like I, you know, I, we, my whole family's here. And what we talked about was the fact that no matter where we went in the world, literally, the arena was the defining building for our family. And St. Louis was the defining city. And no matter whether we sold a house or got a new one, the arena was the one place we could always go back to. So seeing it demolished was sad. What, what would you have liked to have seen done? Oh, I, I would have loved to have seen him do something with it. I think something that would have brought in tourists, like the aquarium that everybody talked about, or something else that would have, because would, that's what it's always been, something that brought people into the city. Okay, all right. Well, thank you very much, thank and you. I want to talk to you a little bit later, so don't go right, anywhere. Thanks. And also, I want to also talk to a couple of people that actually were evacuated. If you can come over here, Travis and Corey. Now, you, you live not very far away, but... I mean, tell me, what was it like for you to be evacuated from your home? Well, at first we were a little upset because uh, we were going to have this big party and we had a bunch of people coming over, but they, we had to cancel that. And at first we were a little upset, but then when we got here and they had refreshments and drinks and food for us, and it was